So what body fat level is actually required to see your abs after all? Today I'm going to tell you what that number is. And matter of fact, it's probably going to surprise a lot of you. And I'm also going to tell you the best way to actually take action on that and get yourself down there, no matter where you are right now. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. So one of the most popular questions I get from both men and women is, is there a specific body fat level that I should try to get to if I wanna be able to see my abs? And I guess the reason why they ask that question is they figure if I can at least see my abs then maybe the rest of me probably looks pretty good too. And while that might be a fair question, I think the thing you need to ask yourself first is, do you know where you're starting from? Because if you and I were gonna take a trip and let's say we're gonna meet in New York City, but you're coming from San Diego and I'm coming from Connecticut, it's gonna be a lot easier trip for me. So we, we have to know where we're coming from in order to know where we're going to and how long it's gonna take us. So for that, there's a lot of methods. And one of the things you could do is kind of invest in something that's gonna be a little bit more expensive, like a DEXA scan, but it's gonna give you a lot more sophisticated results and information. Or you could do something like we do here with Jesse, and that's caliper testing, which is a little bit less reliable, but a lot easier and a lot of times less expensive. Or you could do what I always like to do, something we did 10 years ago on my blog, and it's something we call the eye test. And by the way, I know they're helpful, but if you're gonna put them on your channel and not even give us credit, bad move, dude. All right, so what these charts show you is a couple things. Number one, they easily allow you to identify with a picture as a representative example, not an exact example, but a representative example of what it might look like at a given body fat percentage. So you can say, yeah, I kind of look like that right now. But they also help you to identify visually where you want to be or where you want to get to. And importantly here, guys, it's important to point out that the answer to the question that we started with was what specific body fat level do I have to get to? This is where the encouraging news comes in. It's not just one particular body fat, because you can see here that the range, even on the guy's side here, to actually have abs visible even a little bit, like the top row of abs over here, is somewhere in the 16, 17% range. And it goes all the way down to the most extreme. The same thing here for women. It's gonna have a large range of where you can be from unhealthy, to a much more healthy range, but still be able to see your abs. But depending upon what body fat level you aspire to, it's gonna change the level of commitment and dedication you're gonna to have to have and probably discomfort and all out hatred of the path if you choose the wrong one. Because if you sit all the way over here, first of all, not only is this unobtainable and healthy for the long term, but you need to be so dialed in here and pretty much be just north of dead to be able to sit at this body fat level for any sustainable period of time. So we want to start to veer towards these other healthier ranges. The idea though is it becomes a lot more forgiving in terms of your lifestyle. You don't have to worry so much about your nutrition in terms of being dead on accurate every single day, day after day after day. Cheat meals become a thing of reality as you start to veer more towards these as your ideal and what you're striving for. So the path itself is going to be heavily influenced by what body fat level it is that you're looking to get to. Now the next thing we want to make sure we point out though is something called the training effect. In other words, if you're willing to train your abs along your way to your goal, there is a difference in the level of your ability to see your abs at higher levels. Because we can see right here, at a roughly 9% body fat, a much leaner individual here, there's not a lot of visible ab definition here, probably because there's not a lot of ab training going on here. On the other hand though, this gentleman here at a substantially higher body fat, probably 15 or 16%, has much better ab development because he is training his abs directly. So there's something you wanna make sure you're aware of. If you have a willingness to just add some direct core training to what you're doing, you're gonna have an ability to have those abs pop at even a higher body fat level. Right, so the next question becomes then how do you get there? Right? There's three ways you can do it, and only three ways. One, you could just do nutrition alone. Two, you could just try to train. Or three, you can combine nutrition and training. You guys know me by now, you know I'm not gonna bullshit you. The answer is always gonna be nutrition and training because we know, you probably tried it in the past, that just taking a nutrition approach is really just about adopting a diet, which is a short-term approach that doesn't usually allow you to even keep off whatever it is that you do lose. And then you have the guys that wanna just train and they show up at the gym and there's no accountability once they leave the gym for the other 23 hours of the day and what they actually put in their body. And that doesn't lead to good results either. So you're gonna have to learn how to combine both of them and here's why. Because you're already getting the training effect that we already talked about which has a direct impact on the visibility of the abs, but you're also getting the additive effect of the training with the nutrition because you're obviously exerting effort in the gym burning more calories, which gets to add to the overall caloric deficit you're getting from making those nutrition changes. So the rate and the speed at which you'll get to that goal of where you want to be is going to be dramatically affected by the combination of both in the most positive way. Let me show you an exact example of how this actually plays out. All right, so to break this all down, we need to do just a little bit of math 
but it's actually not that hard. So the 200 pound man at 30% body fat that wants to get to 10% body fat. So we know that 30% of his weight right now is body fat, 60 pounds of fat, wanting to get down to just 10% of that weight, which is 20 pounds of fat. So that means we're gonna have to create an overall 40 pound loss of fat. Well, to get there, we know that we wanna kinda of do this at a safe rate. About one and a half pounds per week is a very conservative number. I like to be conservative, but it works. So to do that, we know a 500 calorie deficit through your nutrition cuts, right, by eating healthier, is gonna give you about a pound of fat loss over the course of a week, roughly. That number has actually been disproven of late, but it's still close enough to get us on track, 3,500 total calories over the week. You add an additional 250 from here to get a pound and a half. Jesse, will you help me with the math? Yeah. Jesse's so good at math. If, with a calculator. So if we want to get 40 pounds with one and a half per week, how many weeks is it going to take us? Uh, so that's 40 times one and a half. No, divide it. You're so, you're so good divide with math. Divided by one and a half. Divided by one and a 26.6. 26.6. If we want to get how many days that is, multiply it by seven. Times seven. 186.6. 186.6. Thank you. So you're good well. at math, Jesse. 186 days. It's about six months, guys. And remember, if you start here at 30%, and you want to get here at 10%. You're not going to spend 185 days looking like this, and then on day 186 look like this. You're going to get the added benefit of being able to look like this guy for a period of time, and then this guy, and then this guy, and then this guy on your journey over here. So you're going to get some additional inspiration from your own results to keep you on track. Remember guys, it's not as hard as it looks, but you do have to get started. And the most important thing is that you get started having an idea of where you want to get to. And if you want to be over here, because that's what you identified back in the beginning of this video, then your journey is going to be even shorter, faster, and maybe even more enjoyable. That all depends upon you and how committed you are to wanting to be at a certain level. All right guys, so there you have it, the body fat level that you need to get to. What is going on here? Jesse's Cliff Notes. You know, where I take 15 seconds to cover what took you, what, 50 minutes to cover in this video? All right, so first up, if we're gonna use me as the example to get to, to lower body fat percentages, I need to eat less gummy bears, do more squats, not be obsessed with getting to as low body fat percentage as you because, I mean, you only have a six pack and I've still got that eight pack. And lastly, instead of using calipers to measure my body fat, you can just put me on the chart as a representative example of what perfection is. Perfection? Perfection. Did I miss anything? Uh, you didn't even mention that you'd be training your abs. Dude, Did I'm still, that part? No, I'm still doing the Baby Shark Ab Challenge. That shit's hot. Get out of here. Please, go, and fast. Guys, if you're looking actually for an ab training plan, we actually have one. It's called Core 4 Abs over at Athletics.com. If you like those outros, or if you want to say anything else about Jesse, hopefully not so nice. You can leave them in the comments below. Meantime, if you haven't already done so guys, make sure you click subscribe and turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. Alright guys, see you soon.